professor of urology, biochemistry and molecular biology at Upstate Medical University. I have two members of my lab here, um, Jennifer Harrods and my graduate student, and Dr. Sarah Bakish is my postdoctoral research fellow. Um, today we are here to discuss and give you more insight about a recent review that was published in Oncotarget. Um, We're going to tell you more about how we conceptualize and put this review together. But before that, I want to give you a little background about my lab and my research focus and what is being carried out in my lab. We are interested in molecular chaperones. These are a group of proteins that are collectively regarded as looking after other proteins uh, for their stability and functionality. My lab is also interested in cancers, mainly kidney cancer and breast cancer. We are interested how these tumors actually being formed and um, transformed. And also we are looking at therapeutic targets, new therapeutic targets in this type of cancer. I'm gonna let Jennifer, the lead author of this review, to tell you more about um, how she conceptualized and put this review together. Jennifer. Thank you. So yes, my name is Jennifer Harritz. Um, I'm the author, lead author of Molecular Chaperones, Guardians of Tumor Suppressor Stability and Function. So when you think about um, tumor suppressors role in cancer, you think, okay, suppressing growth. Um, but really the only commonality between all tumor suppressors is really just their name. They each have a different function, different cellular location, all of them do different things. And so writing this review from the standpoint of what connects these tumor suppressors together, chaperones. And so this was unique in that it um, commonal, uh, adds commonality between all tumor suppressors um, that we describe in the paper, as well as the role of molecular chaperones in cancer themselves. Additionally, a lot of research has been focused on the role of molecular chaperones stabilizing oncoproteins, um, thus uh, identifying molecular chaperones as attractive chemotherapeutic targets uh, for anti-cancer therapy. However, looking at molecular chaperones as um, protecting tumor suppressor function was really a gap in the knowledge that we thought to um, make a review on to, to really bring focus to this area of research. Now, the number of tumor suppressors that are chaperoned by molecular um, chaperones uh, grows by the day, and luckily we have an expert in our own lab that has added to that body of research, Dr. Sarah Backey, and she can tell us a little bit more about that. Thank you, Jennifer. So, um, my name is Sarah Backey. I did my PhD in Dr. Malapur's lab, and during that time, I had the opportunity to work and focus on co-chaperone proteins. Um, some of which we discuss here in the review because of their importance in maintaining the function of tumor suppressor proteins. Specifically, TSC1, FNP1, and FNP2 are HSP90 co-chaperones, and these work in concert with HSP90 to stabilize tumor suppressors TSC2 and folliculin, and this is absolutely essential for the function of these tumor suppressors. Um, and as Jennifer wonderfully described in the review, this is, these are not the only examples of which um, tumor suppressors are chaperoned by molecular chaperones such as HSP90. And we really hope that uh, shedding some light on this and kind of putting this together in a comprehensive manner allows us to refocus in the HSP90 field, in the tumor suppressor field, um, and stimulate further conversation about the relationship between molecular chaperones and tumor suppressors. So I want to say a few last words about um, our review and um, collectively about Oncotarget. I, we thought that Oncotarget was a perfect platform to publish our paper and to disseminate this information to the um, researchers and to the readers. Um, we have pr previously published um, many reports, papers in Oncotarget, um, meeting reports, conference reports, case studies, um, manuscripts. Um, it's a great journal, um, and the way it's been structured and the way it's actually presenting data reviews um, is very useful for the readers, especially in our field, and it really bridges the gap between basic researchers and translational researchers. 
And that's what we try to achieve in here. Try to galvanize and hopefully shed more light and uh, stimulate uh, new ideas into this particular area that we felt is underserved and hopefully will stimulate other researchers to continue working on this. And again, we thought, we felt that Oncotarget was, was a perfect journal, was, a, was the best journal to, to publish this. Thank you. Thank you.